Uh, look at the economies of the world. Uh, like I said, the European Union is forming without anyone pushing them in that direction because they know it's either the European Union for Europe or else they're going to be wiped out by competition from the United States, China, and India. And uh, we already see the young people of the world yearning to get on the internet, yearning to find out what other young people are doing. Because young people instinctively know this is their future. They instinctively know, I want to be part of this future. And so I think the terrorists would like to prevent the transition, but I don't think they're going to. But it is going to be a rocky transition because we do have nuclear weapons. We do have biotech technology, designer germs. And so it may not be a transition that's fully guaranteed. However, it's a very interesting transition because even filmmakers have been interested in this transition. Think of a movie that talks about the most scientifically realistic encounter with another intelligent life form in the universe. In this movie, we realize that Captain Kirk in the Enterprise is the most inefficient way to explore outer space. Hopping from planet to planet, there are 100 billion stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Perhaps half of those stars have planets. That's 50 million planets in our galaxy alone. The most efficient way for a type 3 galactic civilization to explore their backyard is with von Neumann probes. Von Neumann probes are self-replicating machines. They're robots. They land on a moon because the moon is stable. There's no erosion. Uh, you can stay there for millions of years. And it makes a carbon copy of itself. And in fact, it makes a factory that makes millions of copies of itself. These robot probes then shoot out and land on other moons. Each one makes a million copies of itself on a moon and then shoots out a million more. So starting with one, you have a million probes landing on a million moons. And then you've got a million, million probes. And then a million, million, million probes. Until you have a sphere expanding at the speed of light containing these von Neumann probes. Now, what do they do? They land on a moon and they simply wait. They wait for a type zero civilization to become type one. Type zero is not so interesting. You have a lot of fights, a lot of wars, a lot of competing ideas and stuff. Type one is planetary. It's very civilized, very high level of science, very high level of a, an economy. And so the probe simply waits until the civilization makes a transition from type zero to type one. Now, where have we seen that before? We've all seen this before. This is the movie 2001. Because Stanley Kubrick, in the first five minutes of his film, interviewed all the top astronomers, cosmologists, and physicists and asked them a question. What is the most realistic encounter with a type three civilization? And we laid it out. They would land on our moon. Our moon is stable, no erosion. They would then build factories waiting for a type zero civilization to become type one. And if you saw the movie, there's an instant where the astronaut touches the monolith and he goes like this because an alarm clock goes off and the alarm clock signals back to the home race, we have come of age. Well, Kubrick and uh, Arthur C. Clarke were off by 100 years. It's not going to be uh, the year 2001. It's going to be 2101. Mm -hmm. In 100 years, we will be type one. We will have an operating moon base. How long will it take for us to get an operating moon base? 24 hour, 24 seven moon base? Another 100 years. And so I think we're right on schedule. So maybe on our moon, there's already, who knows, there's already perhaps a presence of an extraterrestrial visitation. Well, there, there, have been, um, there have been photographs and essays, and et cetera, written on the subject of having potential discoveries of structures already existing on the moon. How true might that be? Yeah, well, you see, we have no operating moon base. We simply landed on the moon a few times. And therefore, we don't know what kind of energy sources there are. We haven't scanned the moon. We, have, we don't really have a good picture of what's inside the moon or what, what probes may, may exist there. There could be a probe from a type 3 galactic civilization sitting on the moon, <laughs> and we'd never know it. Right. Plus, they may have nanotechnology. With nanotechnology, you don't have to have Captain Kirk and the Enterprise. They could be as big as a bread box. Mm -hmm. You could have miniaturized probes that are part organic, part DNA, and part silicon, a merger of carbon and silicon, in a device perhaps no bigger than a uh, you know, bread box, sitting on our moon, just waiting for us to make contact with it, waiting for us to become type 1.